There's a few things that make Brothers in Arms really special. I can speak about it from a point of view of the history and the storytelling, and I can speak uh, about that from the point of view of the gameplay. Hurry up! Over there! Moving! Fire on that yeah. empty! Hit that empty! Hard. The solutions to a combat problem are very similar to the solutions that you have in real war. We try our best to develop our, our gameplay tactics to be as accurate to actual military tactics as possible. Tactics is not about getting a bigger gun. That's called accessorizing. Tactics is about using your squad. Putting pressure on the enemy and, and finding ways to outflank and outsmart him. Four simple principles. I call them the four Fs. Find the enemy. Let's get that MG set up. Fix him. Don't stop firing! Flank him. And finish him. Of course, there's some leeway there. We got to make it fun for the player. So this time around, we made a lot more freeform. We added a lot more shooter elements to it. In the past, we put such a strong emphasis on squad combat that we took a lot of control away from the player. Set up the MG over there. We realized along the way that uh, ultimately what we needed to do was not neuter the player's ability to be powerful, but to make his squads even more powerful, to make them more relevant. Go! Tell my squad to suppress the enemy or kill the enemy. In fact, if I get really good at the game and I choose to play it this way, I can beat the game without ever firing a shot. Now the player's viewing his squad as more of a weapon rather than a squad. Destructible cover has made a huge difference just in the uh, wow factor and keeping the game new. Just totally blow away a chunk of wall and like people were just so excited every time they see that. It's like really awesome to see people's reaction to that. Introduces a bit of more of an element of time. You're behind a wall and that wall may not be there for very long. You have to use tactics, but you have to use those tactics quickly or you know, you're not going to be around much longer. It's pretty technical, you know, to make something blow up and make it look realistic. But then when you see it in the game and you see it blow up, you're like, that's awesome. Along with the destructible cover system, we have uh, a gore system, which um, is, is pretty brutal, actually. We have uh, a really awesome gore system. You can tear out limbs and arms. Part of our push for authenticity was that we didn't want to pull any punches as far as the effects of these. So when a bullet hits a, hits a target, when a grenade goes off next to a target, we, we want to show what these things do. We get into this, you know, what we call an action camera sequence. The camera goes in really close. I'm right on the guy. So as he's like flying through the air and getting blown up, like, you know, I see an arm, you know, get torn off and, and a piece of his leg is like flying at the camera in glorious slow motion. When you see real soldiers in real situations, a lot of time they're in a relaxed or you know, more of a patrol stance. You can't always be perfectly ready. Guns are heavy. You can't always hold them up to your eyeball all the time. Soldiers are not always in combat. They're not always yelling. If he's in patrol, he's talking, and there's color dialogue to go along with that. I don't think you're going to kill him with words! Coming out of a cinematic, the player and his squad are in this patrol stance. Then you'll suddenly see them all hunker down, and they'll get really quiet. Start getting low, they start whispering. This spot doesn't look too safe. You notice Baker's voice changes when he gives commands, he's whispering. Germans ahead. Don't think they saw us. This lets the player know that he's in stealth and that the, the Germans can't quite see him, but he can't get too close. As soon as combat starts, we'll shift into a combat posture and everybody will be screaming and you know everybody's up when the gun's out and we're fine. Face of fire! With that MG! get a, a great amount of feedback about your surroundings and about the combat and about the way the battle's about to unfold by just looking at your men. This isn't safe, Frankie. Don't lighten up, Gorian. It's just a... There's also armor. Um, there are artillery pieces like, you know, the German side, the, the dreaded 88. You know, 37 millimeter cannons and all kinds of artillery pieces. And then there's also uh, uh, tanks. You can button up, that means you're going to get inside of your hatch and you know, just use your main gun and your turret and take guys out. Or you can even climb up and get on top of them and you have a better view up there and you, 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 know, you can use the machine gun and just grind guys up. 
There's a lot of ways you can use a tank to cause havoc on the enemy. To me, the tanks are like, you know, that's the dessert. <laughs>